You're listening to Scaling Up Services, where we speak with entrepreneurs, authors, business experts, and thought leaders to give you the knowledge and insights you need to scale your service-based business faster and easier. And now, here is your host, business coach, Bruce Eckfeld. Are you a CEO looking to scale your company faster and easier? Check out Thrive Roundtable. Thrive combines a moderated peer group mastermind, expert one-on-one coaching, access to proven growth tools, and a 24-7 support community. Created by Inc. award-winning CEO and certified scaling up business coach, Bruce Eckfeldt, Thrive will help you grow your business more quickly and with less drama. For details on the program, visit Eckfeldt.com slash thrive. That's E-C-K-F-E-L-D-T dot com slash thrive. Welcome, everyone. This is Scaling Up Services. I'm Bruce Eckfeldt. I'm your host. And our guest today is AJ Warner, and he is Chief Career Designer with Touchdown Career. We're going to learn more about the work he does uh, helping companies find talent through internships, some interesting work that he's doing and background that he has. For those of you that are in the Scaling Up community, AJ spoke recently at one of the Scaling Up conferences in Anaheim. So you may recognize him and may recognize some of the things he's talking about, but we'll have a chance to kind of dig into some of the things that he spoke about there, really helping companies understand how they can leverage this unique kind of capability, unique access to talent, which uh, can really be helpful. So I'm excited to talk about this. I'm excited to provide some benefit here for to folks that are looking for good talent. I think that's something we're always looking for, particularly service-based companies, but this should be a good conversation. With that, AJ, welcome to the program. Well, Bruce, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate the opportunity to, to share what I do with your audience. Yeah, yeah. Let's start with background. I know that uh, you've been an entrepreneur, you've been kind of working in the business world. In, in various ways over the years, part of the EO family, EO network as well. Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, before you got into this, how did you get into business? How did you become an entrepreneur? What was kind of your story uh, that led you to what you're doing today? Well, I think being an entrepreneur goes all the way back to when I was a paper boy. That's what first introduced me to business. I pushed myself really hard to get a lot of customers and I really got excited about the idea of being a business person. Uh, when I was in college, I was an exchange student in Japan. I had such a great time there. I stayed longer and actually started a business helping different research institutes uh, prepare for presentations overseas. And when I had to come back to finish my undergraduate studies, I actually sold that business. So that was my first exit from a business. Uh, years later, my wife, who's originally from China, twisted my arm and, and said that she wanted to move back to China. And I made a deal with her that I would be uh, working on an entrepreneurial adventure while we were in China. So uh, we set up a company called Touchdown, which at that time was in the application consulting field. And we were helping MBA students apply to the top MBA programs. And we expanded to business master's programs. And five years ago, a lot of our clients came asking for help to find internships. And that's what allowed us to sort of extend our service. So going beyond just application to what the students were really coming to America for, which was to have great careers. And so we started Touchdown Career back in 2015. Awesome. And and what did you, um, uh, I guess, where did you find the focus? I mean, in, in terms of the types of companies, the types of interns, you know, lots of different internships out there for all sorts of different types of companies. What was kind of the process for you to figure out where you could really kind of play a role in this market? Well, what we found that a lot of small and medium-sized businesses don't necessarily have existing internship programs, but they definitely have needs for talented people. And so when we were talking with students understanding Understanding clearly what they were looking for, which was related to business, finance, data analytics, we began to focus on small, medium-sized business needs and began working with these companies to identify their needs and then introduce interns with the right talent, either quantitative, data, financial, that would be able to come on board and create immediate value for those firms. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, you know if you're a big company like GE or something like that, you like you have the wherewithal and the process and the the uh, the budgets to kind of put together your own internship programs and have you know set up the systems and the interviews and the process. But if you're you know a, a fifty million dollar company, you probably don't have you know maybe you have some resources, but certainly not the experience and the kind of capabilities to put together a real top notch intern service. So it really, it's this small and mid sized company market that you focused on. Give me some parameters for that. What typically are the companies that that do best or that you you help best in terms of size of company, number of people, situation? Typically, companies between 25 and 200 people are a sweet spot for us because 
they, they need people. They're in the process of growing a lot of these companies. So they're constantly on the outlook for great talent. And we're bringing people with the latest skills, very quantitative, not afraid of numbers, who can quickly learn different programming languages as needed. And we identify exactly what the company needs. And then we filter out the right students to introduce to the company. So we work with the HR directly and try to make it as easy as possible for them to get the right talent. And then we help facilitate everything with the interviews and the onboarding. So we make everything easier for the companies. Yeah. And what, what does that kind of assessment process look like when you, when you speak with a company? What questions are you asking? What sort of parameters are you looking to define with a company in terms of the type of talent they're looking for? Well, first we're looking, is it going to be they just need someone for the summer or they're looking for someone who they can have for three to six months and evaluate for a longer term position? So that's the first thing. We're, we want to say just purely an internship or it's maybe an internship to hire opportunity. Then we identify what skill sets. Are they technical skills? Is it going to be like a data position where Python and R programming is critical? Or is it a financial position? And what type of financial skill sets they're looking for? So we dig deep into what they're looking for for each position. And then that allows my team to then go through all the students that we're coaching and identify two or three candidates that best match those requirements. Yeah. I'm curious, do you deal with any of the kind of cultural fit aspects? I mean, I, I, I could see on one hand that sort of the benefit of having an internship program is you get people from different cultures and you get kind of, you know, a certain amount of diversity in terms of thinking style and backgrounds. And there's some real benefit to that, on, you know, on the you know other side or on the same way, you also want to make sure it's going to be a reasonably good fit. How, I guess, how have you kind of navigated the, that sort of cultural, both general, you know, the, the sort of the business culture, is this the right place for this particular person? I, I totally agree because our goal is not just to have a one-time place and we want to build a relationship with the companies that we support. So we want to be a talent channel. So fit is really important. One of the things about our process is that we sit down with the students for two to three hours. We call it a first meeting and really get to know the students, understand what they're looking for, help them get clear about, you know, what opportunities are in front of them. This allows us to evaluate their English, evaluate their cultural skills. Um, But these students are all studying at U.S. universities. Many of them have been in the U.S. for four or six years. They fit very comfortably into uh, the U.S. culture. So we don't really find any issues because they're not coming from outside. They're already here yeah. and they've already got American friends. Many of them have worked on campus. So they're, they're actually quite American. Yeah, kind of acclimated to the, the U.S. culture and, and business environment. And, uh, they have you know, certain U.S. Are. TV shows they love. I mean, <laughs> Big Bang Theory. I mean, I, I honestly have never watched it, but they love it. That's so funny. Uh, Friends is very popular, even though it's, you know, 20 years ago, yeah. 30 years ago. Yeah. So they, they watch all the American shows. They're very, I don't want to say Americanized, but they're very comfortable in America. Yeah, yeah. They, they probably probably know more about American culture than a lot of Americans. In some <laughs> respect. So tell me about how, how do you actually kind of filter the candidates? on the other side. So how how do you kind of find the right interns? What's the process look like? And you mentioned this first interview. How are you kind of sorting through all the possible people that are looking for internships to find what you think are the right ones or the best ones to bring into your program? Well, we supplement what the career offices do at school. So with certain universities, we will collaborate with the career offices. In other cases, we actually go to universities and make presentations. So for example, last week we're at Indiana, Miami of Ohio, Ohio State. Next week, we're going to be at George Washington University, John Hopkins, Columbia up in New York. So we work with the students directly. So we're talking with them. We're presenting and hearing what they're looking for. So we get to know the students and, you know, the students that we bring on are students that we feel would be a good fit for the kind of companies that we work with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And what are some of the, I guess, best skills, capabilities or things that you found kind of most successful in terms of things that companies need and, you know, skills, capabilities that the interns that you've been able to find have? Like, where, where are you finding the best matches from a skill capability point of view? Well, a lot of these students come from leading programs in the U.S. Like, uh, I'm just thinking a company in Chicago we worked with, it was a small CPA firm. And they had access to limited talent. And we were able to bring to them top students from the University of Illinois with three eights, three nines in master's programs in accounting. And they were just couldn't believe the kind of talent that we brought to them as an example. So accounting is something we're strong in. Data analytics, 
Um, a lot of students these days study data analytics and they go and get all the certifications. And so, I mean, we worked with a company in Baltimore that does very, very sophisticated data analytics. And we've been working with them now for three years. Every year we're bringing interns to them because the talent that we, we access is not just limited to Baltimore, it's across the country. So we're bringing people from New York, from Boston, from Chicago, from California, and bringing them to them. And they're able to pick the, the best candidates to match their needs. Finance, we put a lot of people in finance in New York, but I mean, there's one student we put in an investment bank in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And in two weeks, he was already helping them close a deal. And by the end of the summer, he helped them close three deals. And this was only a rising senior, so he had another year of school. They made an offer and brought him back after he graduated. He's now been there for two years. Yeah. And he's like, he's now, he interviews our clients to bring our interns back into that firm. So we work with, you know, really talented students from across the country. And we're able to bring these students to companies that they wouldn't necessarily have access to in their local markets. Yeah. Do you find that companies that end up kind of using the program or, or bringing someone on end up bringing more people on just because once they, once they realize or once they figure out how it works and the benefit and the, the access to skills that it ends up becoming a real sort of talent pipeline for them? Absolutely. And that, that's sort of how, what we call a touchdown. And so when we place a student and later on, they turn that student into a full-time position and come back to us and ask for more. Yeah. That's from our, our perspective is, is a touchdown. So that's what we always are looking for. And we, we are building those two companies up each year. So every year we're adding more and more companies companies that we call repeat visit, you know, repeat customers because we're able to bring them things that really benefit the firm and we don't charge anything. We're not charging the company anything to introduce this talent to them. And how do you get paid? Like what's your, what's your business model and all this? Well, when we started the business 15 years ago, it was a consulting business. So the, the clients would pay us a consulting fee up front, and that would pay for all the different services that we provided them. So when we set up the career business, which was an extension of our application business, we set it up the same way. So the students will pay us a consulting fee. And for that, we're helping them get clear about their goals. We're helping them through their resumes. We're helping them be able to better share what they can offer to companies in their interviews. And and then all the other touch points throughout the service. And then at the end, we're trying to introduce them to companies that see the value of bringing on international talent. Yeah. So the students have already paid us at the very beginning of the service. Got it. So talk me through a little bit about how this works for companies that bring on international, I guess let's start with the internship side, you know, from a, I guess from a legal point of view, like what actually happens to be able to authorize an intern to work for you that's not a U.S. citizen? And then how does it work from, uh, if you do want to go move into a full-time position at some point, just talk us through a little bit about how that works, like what, what the process looks like, how complicated is it, you know, fees, things like that. Sure. So about 10% of the students we work with are either green card holders or citizens. And for the other 90%, they're students or just recent graduates of U.S. universities. So they're all legally in the United States. Mm -hmm. So if it's a student who is still in university, so he's doing it during the summer between his junior and senior year, that student would be on a CPT visa, so curricular practical training, which allows him to work in the summer for 40 hours a week. When the student graduates from this is from any university in America, they automatically get 12 months of OPT, occupational practical training. And in addition to that, the students can have a STEM extension, which is an additional two years. So more and more programs in the United States are offering, well, they become STEM designated, which allows the students to get those additional two years. So most of our students are in programs that give them three full years to work in the U.S. And after those three years, then companies have the option if they want to sponsor those students. And the sponsorship ranges between six to ten thousand dollars Uh, for all the legal fees involved in sponsoring that student. Our students have had great success. For almost every student that a company has wanted to sponsor, um, they've been able to keep that student for longer. So that's been great. And when you consider how much going to a a real headhunter, we're a special headhunter. So we we work for free, which is unusual. (laughs) But a real headhunter is going to charge a lot more. And you already know this person. This person's worked for you for three years. You already know the asset, the talent that this asset brings to your firm. Whereas when you use a headhunter, you never know what you're going to get. So we find companies, after they've had an employee, from us for one or two years, 
they're very happy to sponsor them because this person is doing great work for them. Yeah. And how, I guess, how do companies sort of see the difference between doing an international intern through a program like this versus, you know, regular intern, a U.S. intern, you know, someone, you know, in the U.S. market? I, mean, I guess what, what are the kind of considerations? What are the differences that you've seen or, or differences that companies you've worked with have noticed in terms of, you know, looking at the different internship options that they have out there? Well, one thing is, you know, they're working with us and so we're trying to make the process as efficient and as easy for them as possible. So, you know, they're not just doing it themselves. They have a partner who works with them. And the students that we work with tend to be more quantitative. They're okay. not afraid of numbers. So whether they're, they're men or, or women, they tend to be at very advanced levels of mathematics. Uh, when it comes to learning languages, they're, they're quick to learn a new language, whether they you know, ramp up in Python or R or any of the different statistical software out there. So they can quickly learn those, those skills. Three years ago, placed uh, an intern in an internet company that does a lot of SEM. And during the summer, she got six certifications <laughs> and she wrote uh, macros in, in Excel that were able to go out for all their customers, gather all the information and create reports. So what would usually take one or two hours each week, she automated for the company. And I know because I recently talked with the owner of that company, they're still using that tool. So yeah. um, that kind of gives you an idea that these students, they're, they're willing to work really hard and, and not to beat up on Gen Z and millennials, <laughs> yeah. uh, they're not always you know as committed to the companies as they should be. Yeah. Um, whereas these students really want to earn an opportunity to work longer for your company. And when they're there, they work really hard to do a good job. Yeah. Yeah. And how, um, from a pay point of view, how do companies set up, you know, paying for the internships? Do you, do you advise them on, you know, compensation and things like that? Is it predefined? What, how do you deal with that side of the equation? For the students that are in school, there's opportunities to just give them credit and, and they don't have to be paid. For the students that have already graduated, we always recommend to companies that they should pay minimum wage or whatever is the rate that they typically pay for interns. Mm -hmm. So we see our interns getting paid typically between 10 and $15 an hour. And then if they turn them on to full time, then that's, you know, within the company, they have their own pay rates. Yeah. Market, but market rates many of the students are willing to work at no cost for a month or two to prove themselves. So they're willing to show that they're valuable to the firm before asking to get paid. So yeah. that companies have a lot of different options. Yeah. And in terms of being able to really leverage an intern, what does a company need to put in place in terms of either process or training or, you know, really kind of making sure that the person's going to be successful, they're going to be able to contribute. And I think it's, um, I remember some of my early internships where I was a little, you got to get thrown to the wolves and there really wasn't much of a process. Well, do you advise, are there any recommendations or best practices that you give to folks in terms of how they can make sure that once they have this intern and they have this talent, they really not only make it work for the intern, but make it work for the company and, and they get the benefit they're hoping to get out of this. Yeah. Every time we place an intern with a new company, we always make ourselves available to help them to, to give them some thinking on how to best maximize the value of the intern. One of the things that we recommend is take a junior staff member at the company and make that person a mentor or actually directly the manager over that intern. It's great for the full-time person to get managerial experience because they're, they're managing one one or two resources, but it also gives the intern someone that they can turn to and ask a lot of questions, someone who is a little bit younger, so they may feel a little more comfortable. And especially at the beginning, helps them to get acclimated to the company. We also encourage companies to, to invite out the interns in the beginning, let, make them feel welcome in the company. Yeah. Sometimes they don't know that they're welcome and everyone just makes assumptions because everyone's just so busy. But by taking them out to lunch that first week, they get to know the people, they open up, and then you can begin to see the real personality of the intern. They feel more comfortable. So spending a little bit more time in the beginning makes a big difference to get them acclimated and then start to get the most out of the interns. So you mentioned a couple of, uh, you mentioned the accounting scenario, the investment banking scenario. Any other good case studies or examples, wins uh, that you've seen in terms of clients you've helped, in terms that you've placed? You know, I'm just kind of curious about some of the results you've been able to generate yeah. for folks. Well, one that, that, that always to me is very interesting is, you know, we, since we place a lot of interns in the New York area and fashion is obviously big in New York, Ooh, yeah. we placed uh, an intern in a local New York fashion firm to help with procurement, to help the company get more materials, products from China. And she volunteered because she just wanted to get experience. She volunteered to work in their showroom in Manhattan on the weekends. And she found that there were zero Chinese customers in the showroom. <laughs> so she went out and launched her own marketing campaign. There's an app called WeChat. So she created oh, yeah. a WeChat campaign. And all of a sudden, all these Chinese customers started coming. 
And within one month, she became the top salesperson in their <laughs> <Love> showroom. <it. laughs> yeah. So the manager figured out she was much better at helping brand the company than procure new products for the company. So they switched her role. And over the next three months, she helped the company to get well-known in the Chinese community and help them increase sales. And then they extended her internship for another three months. So she stayed there for a total of six months. And that company got a whole new branding with Chinese customers. They began to export to China thanks to this intern's you know, willingness to step up and, and take initiative. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I think the um, that's a great one because it's not just about kind of figuring out what skill do they have, but really what kind of access to, you know, a whole nother culture, a whole nother market, you know, figuring mm-hmm. out how to communicate, yeah. you know, what's the what's the connection? Great story. Uh, let me think of another one. I mean, let me, uh, you know, this is a, a financial services firm. So they, they, they more like a mm-hmm. financial advisory firm. Uh-huh. So they had to make a lot of calls. So they brought on one of our interns and for the first week, all he was doing was cold calling and it was very tedious. So on the weekend, he created a, an application using his Python skills um, that would go out and gather all the information from different databases. It would gather the person's information from LinkedIn so that when they would call, they would have all the information in front of them, which makes it more efficient phone calling. And the manager that next week found out what he did and was kind of shocked that this intern, without even anybody telling him it on, could created something of value. And here's another example where the manager switched his role from cold calling to building out this app. And so for the rest of the summer, that intern you know, built out this sort of uh, sales development tool that the company continues to use. So, you know, here's uh, someone with programming skills helping the company in a way that the company never realized that they could do. I love it. Work smarter, not harder kind of uh, example. Good. Any examples? I'm just kind of curious about companies that, you know, maybe are not as well positioned or, or, you know, may not want to consider the internship. I mean, any stories of things that you've learned, you know, companies that weren't able to do it so well or, or that didn't do it right. And, you know, if you're thinking about it, you may want to sort of take some time to ponder, you know, you know, that are you really able to kind of do what it needs, what needs to be done to make to make it a successful program? Any learning experiences or things that you learned don't make a good fit for companies? as an intern? Well, I mean, when a company is talking more about the, the intern doing business development or sales, mm-hmm. then we, we take a step back because that's not a good fit for these interns. Yeah. They are not native English speakers. They can be fantastic in sales in their own culture, but American culture is different. Yeah. So we we don't encourage that because we, we want the, the relationship to be successful. We want the student's outcome to be successful. So sales roles are not a good fit. The other thing that we encourage companies that we've seen is that they need to have very clear expectations for the student. And at least in the beginning, help them get off to a strong start. So give them a very small but clear project to help them to get the momentum going. If it's too broad, if it's just doing just general research, then the company misses out because these are really smart kids. They just need a time to get clear about what the expectations are. So working on specific projects that have a beginning, middle and end allows the students to be very successful. And then you can then build on the sophistication of the projects you know, each, each week, each month, and they will typically impress their coworkers with what they can add to the company. Yeah, I can imagine just the, the, a little bit of structure goes a long ways. I mean, I, like I said, I certainly remember some of my early internships where it was it was a little amorphous uh, and you were kind of lost at sea for a while. And uh, yeah, I think giving just a little bit of um, giving them, you know, work to do that's reasonably well laid out, giving them some parameters, you know, giving them some flexibility, but giving them some kind of constraints to work within and, and objectives and resources. Any, I'm curious I mean, about... the same for yeah. American students too. I mean, yeah, I just, native, that you know, could be anybody. It's also need direction, you know. But <laughs> any any once, job needs that they know the organization, then they can begin to take initiative. And yeah. then with that initiative, great things can happen for the company. Yeah. I'm curious about industries. I mean, is there any industry that you haven't been able to kind of get into that you're curious or that you think would be, you know, it's kind of on your radar for figuring out how you can kind of bring your business to or, um, you know, or areas of the country or I'm just kind of curious what's on your kind of expansion, scaling strategy uh, list here as you uh, grow and build the business? Well, I mean, we've been working in lots of different industries. So anything related to business. So industry wise, you know, we're pretty spread out because we work with a wide variety of companies. But the one market that is very popular for students, but we have this, the most difficult time finding companies that are open to international students is Boston. I don't know why Boston is so difficult. Huh. So I've talked to a lot of companies. It's always challenging to find companies in, in Boston. So that's always a market we're, we're trying to grow. We place lots of interns in San Fran and L.A., Chicago, New York. 
but uh, right. Boston stuff. So anyone listening that's in the Boston area that wants to uh, try this out, <laughs> special focus. Very special focus up in the Northeast there. This has been great. If people want to get more information, learn more about the process, see if this is you know potential fit for them, a potential source of talent for them, what's the best way to get more information? Well, uh, one way is by email. Reaching out to you by email is very efficient. So my email is ajwarner, like Warner Brothers, at touchdown-international.com. So ajwarner at touchdown-international.com. Uh, you're welcome to give me a call. I can I can share my number. I enjoy getting calls from people, except those people trying to sell me warranties. Uh, <laughs> so you know, my my direct number is six one four two eight six one eight six one. So okay. happy to get your call and answer your questions directly. Excellent. I'll make sure that your email address is in the show notes as well, so people can click through and contact you. Um, great opportunity for folks that are looking to add to their talent, looking for something a little different, looking for some you know folks that can probably add skills that are probably harder to get on the general market and the, sort of the added benefit of some diversity and bringing in some different cultural perspective on things. Uh, I love the story about fashion. I think those are wonderful things that can happen if you engage in programs like this and um, you know op- open to possibilities. So I encourage everyone to look into it. I would encourage everyone to check out the information, consider it as a tool for you. We're coming in into the kind of internship season here. So it's yes, a great, we are. Time, great time to look at it. AJ, this has been a pleasure. I'm curious to see how the business develops. I'll look forward to kind of keeping in touch. I think it's a great program. I think that, uh, you know, this whole world of talent is so dynamic these days that, you know, as we move into more kind of this gig economy and, uh, you know, people are going to be looking more and more for different ways to find good, talented people, develop different relationships with them from an employment point of view. So this is going to be a great opportunity for folks. I really appreciate that. One, one, one quick thing, one quick thing is that not only are they on site, you know, many of the students are very happy throughout the year to work remote and they can work on, you mentioned gig economy, yeah. they can work on projects. So we have a lot of it, students that are very interested in remote opportunities. So that also might be a great fit for companies. Yeah, I know, uh, you know, a lot of folks and um, we're recording this in the middle of COVID-19 as well. So a lot of people are doing yes. remote work these days. But uh, yeah, it is. Well, it's it's just generally the trend that people go. I mean, I work with a lot of companies. I coach a lot of companies with not only the, the general staff, but actually the leadership mm-hmm. team are all diverse um, or mm-hmm. distributed. Uh, you know, so it's I think it's just a, a model you're going to see more and more of. Um, and um, yeah, companies need to get good at figuring out how to how to bring together teams virtually and, and work with uh, virtual organizations. So yeah, great opportunities. And again, I encourage everyone to check out AJ's information, contact him if you're interested and, and learn more about the program. Uh, AJ, thank you so much for taking the time thank today. You. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thanks so much, Bruce. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Scaling Up Services with business coach Bruce Eckfeldt. To find a full list of podcast episodes, download the tools and worksheets, and access other great content, visit the website at scalingupservices.com. And don't forget to sign up for the free newsletter at scalingupservices.com slash newsletter.